The Titans made some big moves acquiring Julio Jones. So what does the 2021 NFL season hold for the Tennessee Titans? We're going to get into all that and more in this video. What's crackalacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know so, go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you, of course, appreciate the content. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful, sensual football discourse down there. And let's talk some Titan football as we're about to do. We're going to do a deep dive of the Titans roster as well. Let's take a look at the starters and then give you a prediction. But let's take a look at this offense led by Todd Downings. Now Arthur Smith. He's gone to Atlanta, but I don't think much changes with this offense. Uh, last year, or for the most part, they've been an outside zone run blocking scheme uh, team with a lot, a lot of play action. But uh, Smith, just because of Derrick Henry, I mean... You're dealing with one of the best running backs in the league, and you want to play to your player's strong suit. So you incorporate a lot of inside zone and duos. Uh, just a, a lot, a lot to really take advantage of that physical nature of Derrick Henry. And honestly, it shouldn't change under Downing. Now, they were third in what? They were, uh, or a third of their pass plays were actually play action. I think that does change. I think that comes down a little bit because now with Julio Jones, I don't think they're going to be afraid to sling the ball much more. Um, I think they're going to they're going to have just some traditional just drop back and drop back and throw. Uh, I don't think because I mean without play action, without screens, it's not really influenced by the run game. So I mean they're still going to take advantage of that. Don't get me wrong, but I think now with Julio there, it's like they'll feel they'll feel they won't mind just having Tannehill drop back and throw. So I think the probably the most interesting thing to talk about, which <laughs> apparently isn't Julio Jones, but for me, it's who wins that right tackle spot. Because let's be honest, man. Let's be honest. It's uh, probably the one position that, or the one position battle that's an actual battle. Because I really think it should be Dylan Radunes or Radins. I, now the draft's over, I forget how to say his name. But he should be capable enough to beat out uh, Kendall Lamb uh, or maybe what Ty oh, Simbralio. Oh, sucking names. But he, Sam or uh, Ty there, he's been more of a uh, journey guy his career. So, and I mean, the, and Lamb, those guys are replacement starters, depth pieces at best. Like this should be Redden's um, job to lose, really. So I'd like to see him end up being the starter, but they bring back all four other starters in um, Taylor, Luan, um, Ben Jones, Roger Saffold, and Nate Davis, who's wow, man, he's been really like really good the last three th uh, three seasons. Has it been three or two? I can't remember. But I remember they threw him for just initially into the starting lineup. He really struggled and then found his groove. I really think it was two seasons now. But he found his groove during the playoffs. Definitely two seasons. Time flies. But uh, last year, I think he really made home. He was really strong on the offensive line. So, yeah, this offensive line is going to be pretty pretty darn good. They're going to it's they're gonna be running a lot, a lot, as they should. They have Derrick Henry in-house it'll be interesting i guess like i guess darrington evans maybe really takes more of a role here as the backup i don't know maybe jeremy uh mcnichols i mean those guys really just they even have brian hill in-house like i'm i mean i'm not gonna lie to you derrick henry's probably gonna be seeing three like 300 plus touches again it's just gonna be the thing uh the tight end position you could argue that Maybe that's kind of up for grabs, but I think they're going to be fine with Anthony Ferkser. Um, He kind of, it's weird because he sometimes takes this H-back role too, where he will line up in the backfield as a as a blocker. But uh, he's been a fine receiving target, so I don't think anyone should really take away from, uh, from him. Like, they got Jeff, what, Swam, Swam? former Dallas Cowboy. He's been just kind of guy bounced around the league at this point. They have Jared Pickney from a couple of seasons ago out of Vandy, but uh, yeah, 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess the interesting name here is uh, Miller Forstall. We'll see if he makes the roster. I didn't even mention Chadon Heron, dude. I like him a lot. I hope he makes the roster, or at least they pick him up on the practice squad. A guy that has a lot of flexibility. I think he could really play tackle. But at the very least, like, he could come in there and play guard. Like, he he's played all over the line at BYU. He was really used as a rotation player and then got to be a starter last season. So, very interesting guy to watch. Let's talk about this receiving core. Julio Jones, A.J. Brown, scary, terrifying. You got guys that can win downfield and after the catch. It's it's going to be wild. Josh Reynolds, you like this because he has the ability. Like, him and Brown have the ability to line up either in the slot or on the outside. You get real creative with that. And then behind them, I mean, I guess you got Nick Westbrook, who's kind of been on the roster for the last few seasons. He's He's fine. Des Fitzpatrick, I wasn't too crazy about in the draft, but he's another big guy. Uh, kind of a clunky receiver, if you ask me, but eh. uh, looking at the rest, I know a lot of people were really high on Mason uh, Keynesy. It'll be interesting to see if he makes the roster, at least as a special team player. And I've heard actually really good things about Racy McMath, which I'm very intrigued about um because i think he's very raw at the very least this guy could make it as a special teamer but he's very raw he's really just big and fast but i think it'd be kind of cool if uh he maybe makes a practice squad or maybe he fills in at the roster somewhere but he could be an interesting guy they could just plug every so often and be like hey go down the field like even if you're just deploying them as a decoy go down the field and win my friend go down the field and win. But this should be a very scary offense. Ryan Tannehill is a very underrated quarterback. Fins up, baby, fins up. Really, really a shame that Adam Gase kind of killed his career in Miami. But he, he's, since he's been here in Tennessee, I'm, I'm saying it, dude. He's been a top 10 quarterback in the league. The guy's been very, very good. Let's take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest and the best place to go play fantasy football for big cash prizes ooh we and let me tell you underdog they got you covered all you have to do is draft no need to worry about injuries waivers or lineups underdog they got you covered so go online or use the app which is pretty slick and just draft a season-long best ball team and they take care of the rest no in-season management required and they're willing to give you 25 dollars when you sign up so you can take a shot in their million dollar fantasy football tournament or you can play in some other best ball leagues or even make prop bets now you get that free 25 dollars on underdog when you use the promo code bro schmo it's free to sign up, so use promo code BROSHMO. Bam, you get your $25 once you make your first deposit. So drop a buck in there, bam, you got $26. You big spender, you, y'all baller. But go ahead, support Underdog. It helps me out. It's always much appreciated, much obliged. And if you're looking for more fantasy content from me, check me out on TikTok at BROSHMO. The link's in the description below. This team's, this offense is capable of going all the way it's just will the defense step up after a big down season last year so let's go ahead talk about the defense led by shane bowen but let's be honest this is mike rabel and a bunch of guys he likes but uh yeah it's mainly it's a three four defense they run a lot of man coverage and often well, at least what we saw last year man they like to they played a lot of off coverage on third downs which was a bit uncharacteristic, if you ask me. Because uh, going back to what this team liked to do, going back to when Dean Pease was um, defensive coordinator, they, they loved to blitz. Like, he was a blitz happy. This team got pressure from a variety of different positions. Like, you don't know if he was blitzing up the middle, maybe with a linebacker or safety, or maybe if that slot guy or a corner's coming in. Like he did, he blitzed in a lot of creative ways. And this team last year, they didn't do that a lot, and their pressure suffered for it. They didn't get a lot of pressure. Uh, and if you're asking me, the duo of Harold Landry and uh, Bud Dupree doesn't really scare me. You know, uh, Bud Dupree was a guy that. I'm going to say it, this is only an opinion, but really benefited and succeeded because of the guys around him. TJ Watt, uh, he had Hayward, he had Tuitt, he had a lot of talented guys next to him. 
he will be working with a lot of talented guys here and like Jeffrey uh, Simmons. So maybe, maybe it works out. It'll be interesting to see. But uh, I think if they're going to at least get pressure, they are going to have to, they're going to have to bring it from other positions. They're not going to just get it from that duo. Um, or at least I think consistently they won't be able to do that. So let's go ahead and talk about the defense because they are missing a big, big part in Daquan Jones. Like he played a huge part in this defense as the nose tackle played 240 snaps last season. And I mean, that was where he played 240 snaps at nose tackle of his 700. And what was it? 63. And the next closest to play there at the nose was, well, Simmons, and he only did 84. Someone's going to, like, they, the nose tackle position for this defense played about 400 snaps. Now, who's going to come in and bring that? You, yeah, Simmons will be there occasionally, but they're going to move him around a bit. So then who's the next guy? I think there's two guys that really stand out to me with one being, uh, I think I'm saying this right, Tier Tart. He was a, I believe he was a formerly undrafted free agent last year from Florida International, and he really impressed, I think. And I, I really expect him to take a bigger role. In the and other. the other guy I was thinking of was Aubrey Jones, but he announced his retirement just a few days ago. So it, it for me, it has to be Tart. Like they got Kyle Pecco. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Um, they have Woodrow Hamilton listed as a starter here. I yeah, I don't see that. I think it's going to have to be Tart that really picks up a lot of the slack. I, like I said, I'm pretty high on him, though, in all honesty. And, I mean, a guy like Danico Autry, he's not built to, like, he doesn't have very many snaps and nose tackle. Like, that's not going to be where he makes his bread and butter. But I think he actually helps out a ton in terms of the edge or the pass rush as well. So, like, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pretty excited. He was a really big addition. Uh, I mean, they also got Laryl Murchison, who was a, um, I think he was a late round draft pick in 2020 out of NC State. Uh, of course, Rashad Weaver is there as well, um, but he's more of an edge setter than an actual, like, he ain't going to kick him that far inside. So I think it's really going to have to be Tart. That's, uh, that has to be, it will be the guy that emerges. That's just my opinion. Um, going to the linebacking corp ain't impressive with Rashad Evans Rashawn Evans I really think by like this is his last year with the Titans I think Monty Rice honestly I don't know how much of the snaps he's going to eat into because David Long's there too but I think he's best as a just special teamer but I really liked Monty Rice coming out of um Georgia I was a big fan like this is a guy that I think he's got good athleticism he's solid against the run but sometimes like in coverage, he his processing could be a bit slow, but the dude has the athletic ability. It's just he needs to get more confident in seeing what he or yeah, seeing and reading and believing. If you kind of get where I'm going at with that, but I guess believing what he sees. But Jayon Brown, one of the most underrated linebackers in all of the league, dude, one of the better coverage linebackers in the league as well back on a one-year deal real steal i think they really should pay this guy not nearly as much as fred warner don't get me wrong but i think he deserves to get a good payday uh i mean i mean we could really just go into the cover like coverage because this is luckily they're gonna have a, they're gonna have a lot more health on their side this season i mean god willing but uh, I think I expect Kevin Bayard to play much better this year. Last year was a down year in by his standards. I really think that Amani Hooker is going to take over the the box safety role because um, this team does like to give a lot of cover one looks, and I think Hooker is best suited to be in the box for those cover one looks, while Bayard is kind of like the freelancer. But yeah, Monty Hooker, I think gets to start, man. This guy's this guy's gonna be good. He is gonna be good. I was really high on him a few years ago out of Iowa. Uh, but the real question is corner, man. They were starting guys like uh, what was it, Chris Jackson last season. It just it, it wasn't working out, man. They so they really addressed it. They essentially they they blew it up. Uh, they got rid of guys like Adoree Jackson who couldn't really stay healthy. Um, Malcolm Butler. 
bringing in Janoris Jenkins, I thought was a good addition. I mean, they brought in a lot of very capable man coverage corners. Janoris Jenkins, who I think is a very good corner number uh, two. And Caleb Farley, dude. And the biggest thing with him is, uh, of course, the, the red flag being his health. But we know that he had the makeup. He had the traits to be an elite top 10 pick. But it was those red flags with injuries that kind of scared people off but i think he definitely gets the start uh you're gonna get a healthy christian uh fulton how he ends up into the mix here will be very interesting because i really think that nickel job's gonna go to elijah molden he was a steal at the end of the third round and this guy's just too good he could literally do whatever mike rabel wants like this guy has the movement skills to cover D or even be a necessary blitzer. He can play the run game. Some of my worry about his size, but I mean, he's a slot corner. He'll be fine. The guy's tough. I, I think I think it won't be long before he ends up being the starter there, if not out the gates. I'm very excited about that. Uh, I expect Chris Jackson to be actually much better this season. Keep in mind, the dude was, a, I believe, a rookie last year. Uh out of Marshall, right? Yeah, I believe he was a rookie out of Marshall. Chris Jackson Marshall? Yep, Chris Jackson Marshall. Got it. I thought so. It's, sometimes it's hard to remember. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, I think he's a good depth piece, you know? Because, I mean, you're going to have you're gonna have Farley, Jenkins, uh, Fulton, Molden all ahead of him on the depth chart. So, him being your fifth guy is not too bad. I expect a pretty good jump from him uh looking at I mean the rest of the guys on the depth chart I'm not too wild or wild about but I think they, they it's fine they got a strong strong core there so yeah I I'm excited I'm excited about this defense will they take the necessary jump I don't know it really depends can this team get pressure because I mean it doesn't matter how good like you they brought in good players that should be able to cover well it doesn't matter how good your guys can cover you're only gonna guys can only you can only cover those guys for about especially a man defense about five seconds you know if your pressure ain't hitting home then yeah your guys are gonna be in trouble so i'm expecting a like i think they're putting a lot on dupree kind of being it they gave him the big boy contract so he needs to come through um and we i didn't really talk about jeffrey simmons a lot here but the dude's a stud let's be honest this is going to get a big payday, uh, if not at the end of this season, next season. So the dude's a monster. So let's go ahead to my projected stars. I do this based on who I think is going to be on the field the most, not necessarily base packages. So let's go ahead into that, looking at the offense. I got Ryan Tannehill, Derek Henry, Julio Jones, A.J. Brown, Josh Reynolds, Anthony Ferkser. Got Taylor Lewan, Roger uh, Saffold, Ben Jones, Nate Davis, and then Dylan Redins. Um, like I said, I really think he's going to win that starting job. Looking at the defense, Harold Landry, Bud Dupree as your edge rushers. I got Jeffrey Simmons and Danico Autry. Danico Autry is more of a 5-tech, um, just in case you really didn't know. I think he's more of that 5-3 tech. Uh, either line him up right over the tackle or maybe a little um, right over the guard. One of those two. Jayon Brown, Rashawn Evans, uh, Caleb Farley, Janoris Jenkins, Elijah Molden. I'm telling you, I'm, I was super high on this guy. And then Kevin Bayard and Amani Hooker. We'll find out more as training camp begins to start. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's go ahead to the predictions. How will they do? How will they fare in 2021? Well, I got them at a healthy 11 and 6. Um, I got them winning the division. They got a 4 2 division record. Um, they actually have a relatively easy schedule. It's not like facing the Texans and Jaguars twice a year is too threatening. Um, and really depending on, you know, what type of Colts team we see this season behind Carson Wentz, it, honestly, it could be there. It could be easy pickings in that division, but they have to face the, uh, what the NFC West, right? Cause they, uh, you got the Seahawks, Rams, Niners, and Cardinals. That's might be the toughest division in football. So that's going to be rough. They also got um, games against, let's see here. Duh, 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 duh. Is it the AFC? 
yeah, I guess, yeah, they got games against the AFC East, which, uh-oh, I need to pop this back. There we go. But uh, the AFC East being Patriots, we'll find out uh, with Cam Newton or Mac Jones by week 12, it'll be interesting. Uh, that's not necessarily a, it could be a tough game. We got the Bills. Um, obviously the Dolphins at the end of the year, I don't know what type of Dolphins team, like we'll see. You can go to my Dolphins breakdown, man. I'm very unsure of the team, but, uh, we know, we know the Jets. That won't be too much of a challenge, but them facing the Chiefs is going to be very interesting. It's going to be in Tennessee that I can't wait for circle it, dude. Week seven, man. I can't wait for that game, but yeah, I got him making the playoffs, winning the division. Um, 11 and 6 I think is very safe obviously I, I think this could be a, like a 12 or 13 win team but I kind of I, I think 11 wins is kind of safe you know if I was going to say over or under I would put it at 11 so yeah uh, but that's it for the video let me know what you think in the comment section below and as always until next time you be easy my friends later